Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. It was the slime by Scott Donnelly. It was game day for the dads and the kids, but in two very different ways. While their dads hunkered down in the basement, or the man cave as it was so aggressively referred to during baseball season, Felix, Lucas, and Lucas's twin sister Erica set up their own shop in the living room. While their dads were in the basement cheering on the opening day of baseball, they were setting up an extravagant network of gaming screens. On the big TV, Felix set up with his wired controller and headset. Across the room, Lucas cozied up at a desk, using the computer as his home base. And on the couch, comfortable under a fuzzy blanket, Erica used her handheld gaming console. Everyone logged in? Felix asked once he felt like everyone was ready. And they were. Both Lucas and Erica gave thumbs up. Felix continued, Okay, then let's drop into the map. I'll mark an area near the mountains. Everyone on me. We'll loot the cabins first and then push down the slopes. The game began. Their three colorful, quirky characters dropped out of a flying bus in the sky and soared down toward the large open world map with 97 other worldwide players all looking to eliminate each other for the victory. Suddenly, something smacked the outside of the sliding glass window to Felix's left. He looked over and saw green ooze dripping slowly down the outside of the glass door. Oh! he cried in disgust. Some bird must have eaten the wrong berries or something. Neither Lucas nor Erica heard him, both of them wearing headsets and focusing on landing their characters in a safe place away from other players. Felix, however, couldn't remove his eyes from the dripping green ooze on the back door. Then another green splat smacked the deck, followed by a third and a fourth. Felix stood up and went to the door to get a closer look. He studied the slimy substances splatting all over the back deck, confused and curious. Hang on a second, guys, he said to his friends. But they still didn't hear him or pay him any attention. Felix opened the door and stepped out onto the back deck, slowly weaving his way through the disgusting green splats. He stopped at one of them, knelt down, and looked at it. It jiggled back and forth. Another one then hit the deck in front of him. Felix jumped in surprise and looked up at the sky to see where they were coming from. And to his surprise, he saw a flying saucer hovering over the house in the sky. Well, this can't be good, Felix said. Suddenly, one of the closest green splats moved on its own and attached itself to Felix's shoe. He looked down and screamed, trying to shake it off. He kicked, but it was stuck. Then it shot up at his face. Erica threw her arms in the air. Uh, I'm down. Lucas, come revive me. She looked over to her brother, who was sitting back and eating a bag of chips. I was eliminated five minutes ago, he said with a crunchy mouthful. Erica turned and noticed that Felix was gone. Where's Felix? she asked. Lucas turned around, also clueless. That's when they both noticed the back door was open. The twins stood up and walked out onto the deck. Felix! Lucas called out. Are you out here? You're the only one alive in the game, Erica said. You need to come revive Lucas and I. There was no answer. Everything was eerily silent. Then, out of nowhere, Felix popped up from behind them, only he didn't look like his normal self anymore. He was a hideously deformed, mutant creature. Felix growled and now wielded a sharp weapon. Lucas and Erica screamed. 
They turned to run back into the house, but Felix was quick to grab Lucas around the back of the neck. Erica didn't even hesitate. She ran back into the house and down the hallway as fast as she could. Monster Felix and Lucas struggled in a fight with each other. Lucas tried to get away but couldn't escape the monster-tight grip, but he was able to wrestle the weapon away. He grabbed it and then used it to butt Monster Felix in the stomach. Felix grunted, growled, and backed up. Lucas turned and ran off the deck and into the yard, but Monster Felix was too quick. He chased him down, tackled him, and sent the weapon flying. Monster Felix straddled his former friend and then barfed up green slime onto his face. Lucas screamed through the splattering. Inside, Erica took cover in Felix's bedroom. She closed the door and scrambled for a weapon to protect herself. Under the bed, she pulled out a large Nerf gun. She made sure it was loaded and then hid behind a chair. She waited silently, hoping that the monster from outside wouldn't find her and that the dads from the basement would maybe be up for a snack refill soon and save the day. But until then, Erica had no choice but to stay hidden and out of bang, bang. Someone was on the other side of the bedroom door. Erica trembled in fear. She gripped the Nerf gun as tightly as she could. The door began to jiggle loudly like someone was trying to get in. For one vulnerable second, Erica thought maybe it was Lucas. Lucas, is that you? She whimpered from behind the chair. But quickly she realized that it wasn't. The door blasted open with a snarling growl. Monster Felix burst in with rage. Erica stood up and aimed the Nerf gun. She fired off as many rounds as she could, all of which were direct hits. Monster Felix crumbled to the ground, exhaling a final, gurgling breath. Then he blew up. Erica ducked for cover, protecting herself from the flying debris. Once the explosive end of Monster Felix had settled, Erica ran out of the bedroom, down the hall, and back outside. Lucas! Lucas, where are you? Are you okay? She shouted for her brother. There was no answer. She looked left and right, but there was no sign of him. Then, out of nowhere, and just as Felix had before, Lucas popped up behind Erica, but no longer in his normal form. He was now Monster Lucas, hideous and mutated. He grabbed Erica around the neck, making her drop the Nerf gun. He kicked it away out of her reach and then focused his slime-covered hand over her face. The basement door opened and Buck, Felix's dad, came up from its depths. Wearing his baseball shirt and matching hat, he held an empty glass bowl that once held a spicy cheese dip. Buck looked around as he entered the kitchen and opened the fridge. "'Kids, you doing okay up here?' he called out. To no response. Looking in the fridge, he noticed the spicy cheese dip was gone. He tried to think quickly about a replacement. Ranch? Buffalo sauce? Looking down at the ground, Buck noticed a glob of green slime on the floor and smiled. Hey, Charlie! He called out loudly to the other dad in the basement. We're out of nacho cheese. Uh, how about guac? Buck grabbed a spoon from the counter and scooped the slime into the spicy cheese dip bowl. Ahead, he saw another glob. He moved in and scooped it up, too. Around the breakfast nook, he saw another glob. This is my lucky day, Buck smiled as he advanced on the third glob of green slime. What Buck didn't see, however, were Monster Lucas and Monster Erica standing at the end of the hallway where the trail of slime globs were leading him to. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, 
who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors – Scary Stories for Kids. Hey Weirdos! Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.